Okay, we're back again. I'm just going to show you programming the uh, pick chip so it becomes a mod chip with our super sick uh, lock.asm or dot hex code. Sorry. Um, so this is a program we're using. It's a clone K150 and it's a piece of shit. I highly recommend you don't buy one of these. But let's plug it in. Be dumb. Right, so I spent about two hours um, finding the correct drivers and software for this crap and trying lots of different versions. Open microburn.exe. It should give you some errors. Oh, I think give you some errors. I dig your errors, look at that shit. Oh, so let's stick a chip in. Let's disconnect the power from the programmer first. You want that little dot facing up like it shows you on the picture. And one one leg up. So you're not going in the bottom, you're going one above. It doesn't matter how you put it in, just lock the ZIF chip then. ZIF clip. Hook up the USB. Be done. So the chip's now locked in. Right, it's reading the... Right, you see, it's 3FF for everything. So a completely blank, blank chip. Right. So we'll file. Load. No, I don't want to save it. Pick load the lock dot hex, not the key dot hex, and you see it loads the data, and then we'll click program. Yes, uh, no, you don't want to change the OS call value. It doesn't get used anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yes, right, this is the chip, and it's programming, and you can see this flashy LED means it's programming as well. Done. Right. So now read back the chip, and make sure the data is there, which it is, and we're done. So disconnect the USB, pop it out. If you are going to buy a programmer, I highly recommend you buy a Willow. Uh, we had an absolute nightmare programming this chip. Absolute nightmare. Using a cheap Hong Kong programmer and the drivers were a nightmare. I spent about two hours to find the drivers, but we got it going. I had to use a Windows XP box as well, but it's programmed with the super sick lockout chip uh, code. Super sick. CIC. We're just going to put some insulation tape under the lifted pins so when we solder to them um, we don't bridge any of the other pins beneath. And we're going to add our wire for the 50-60 hertz part. See the pin's a bit better now. Pin 38 and pin 24. Not going to do that for the Super CIC, well, the regu regular CIC lockout chip, because we need to solve it with the board and not the legs. So, just for them two. And then I'm going to put some hot glue on once we get it done. That's a long enough length of it. So we need to bridge these two and then have a length of wire coming off as well that's going to go over our uh, mod chip. So D, D, D. Let's just bear this wire. Alright, it's good. Heat up the soldering iron again and tin this wire. When tinning a wire, or tinning anything to be fair, you want to heat the wire and not the solder. So you place the wire to the iron, it's not hot enough yet, but the wire to the iron then you put the solder on top of it to tin it, you don't want to heat that and try and knock it on, it doesn't work like that let's see, maybe it's hot enough no, not yet, give it a minute or two There we go. 
That's them two soldered in nice, quick and easy. Hot glue them later once we've finished everything. Right, I'm going to go look at my install diagram, see what I've got next to do, and I'll be back in a bit. So we've just soldered four cables to the CIC chip and we've still got the hide dog. Hide dog. And we've still got the um, 50 60 hertz cable going from the PP1 and PPU2. PPU1 and 2. So we're just going to glue this chip here. I'll put some tape down first to insulate it, but glue it there so then we can start soldering wires to the chip. So we want to glue this chip here so it's stable and then we can solder to it. We're not going to insulate it, I bent all the legs up so they don't interfere. There we go. Let's give that a minute a set and then we'll cut this strip off here. I will glue all the wiring, but after I've tested it to make sure the wiring's working, because there's no point gluing a point and then it not being a good point, and then you're screwed. So, back in a bit. It's working! Let's tidy up. Back in a bit. Okay, so we've put some glue down now on all the um, points hold the wires in place and we're just going to put some insulation tape over the top of these wires over here and over the chip as well to make it tidy we've also insulated um, the legs of the LED with some electrical tape bent it round cut out the old SNES LED and insert that new one and just glued it into place with some hot glue some hot glue there so we're just going to put some tape down and then reassemble Let's watch this last step the soldering points were quite the nightmare, I must say. Lifted pads, had to find where they went to. Soldered to alternate points. Not fun, not fun at all. Let's get some tape here. Just tape it all down just to finish tidying it up. Another piece here, just to cover these wires up. It's cutting away the untidy bits like stringy glue. I said to that, one wee mod, that's a pick. Oh, let's go test it again. Now we're ready to reassemble. Wait a sec, will this shield go back how it's supposed to go? Let's check that first. Bit of a nightmare. I think we're blocking the screw hole. There we go. Let's fit this back into place. Connect the controller ports. Nice and bright. And rewired and reinsulated and got the ground. I reassemble. I'm widening the card slot now. And then we can play the greatest game of all time. Final Fantasy 3 or 6. Okay, back again. As you can see we have reshaped this. We used a very old soldering iron for the cartridge slot and we just cut away to the desired shape and then we use some sandpaper to sand it down and get it all smooth again and as you can see a British cartridge still fits the slot perfectly fine powers on works Mario 60Hz again now let's power that off and as you can now see the magic 
and the best car in the world now fits. Brilliant. I'm done. Right, I'll have to go play. Bye, everybody.